Thank you very much. It's very nice to be here. Uh, something, some things before I begin my official conference. I was very surprised when I came to Australia. Uh, I'm a doctor huh? <laughs> because, of course, you. Everybody has a lot of titles, but we in Venezuela, we do not use them. <laughs> in our party, we use comrades. When I am working with the indigenous people in Venezuela and in Latin America, we use brother and sisters, but we never use doctor. For that, I, <laughs> I agree with you. It's not necessary. It's not good often to, to say it. Uh, first thing. The second, I am very glad to be here with you present. It's, I'm very proud to be here in the uh, uh, city and in the, in the building of the trade union of the MUA. Here you stay. Huh? <laughs> I, I had the chance to be a uh, half day in Sydney with your comrades. I visited the docks. I could speak a little bit with the workers. And it was very interesting and for me, because on one hand, we are ready to discuss about what happened in Venezuela, what happened in Latin America. But at the same time, I am here to learn how do you organize? What are your struggles? How do you manage? How do you uh, see our, um, our country and our struggle of our working class from far away? It's a uh, uh, way we have to do it, huh? to uh, teach and to learn to uh, inform and to receive information, especially in, our, in a world where we can say we have too much information or news and we are very bad informed. Huh? Because really was we heard of uh, Australia is almost nothing, only when there's a bushfire but never about the struggles of the working class, never about the struggles of the trade unions. And uh, I'm sure uh, in the other way it's the same. What information do you have about Venezuela? I think it's only bad news. <laughs> and never they will really uh, inform what are thinking, what are doing the people in Venezuela. In this way, uh, I'm very glad to be here with the trade unions, with uh, the other comrades, and uh, especially uh, thank you also to the Communist Party of Australia. Uh, he has a lot of responsibility also. And um, it's a great opportunity to uh, make a conversation we will say it, because I'm not a doctor, I'm not a teacher, I'm not a professor. I'm uh, only here to can be uh, discuss, give my vision. We always say I'm not selling the truth. I try to be the more, more objective as possible, but also here are persons present who know Venezuela better than me. Uh, the first one is here, <laughs> our comrade in the first line. He was in a brigade in Venezuela. And for that, I'm, I must be very cautious <laughs> not, to, not to tell lies, <laughs> because he will stand up and say, no, it's not so. <laughs> OK, thank you very much. And uh, in, uh, I tried to organize my intervention here with some questions. They, I, I organized them with comrades of Australia. I said, of the many things we, we can inform what could be the uh, interesting subjects. 
and we say um, we concentrate us in the following issues, topics. Of course, you can ask later what you want. Uh, first, what progress is being made towards socialism by the Bolivarian Revolution? We're speaking about socialism. I was very surprised that in the logo of your trade union, MUA, there's also socialism. It's not normal in the trade unions. Of course, they speak it, but to have it in the logo, uh, it was surprising. Okay, what happened about socialism in Venezuela? Second is, have the conditions of the people improved in recent times as a result? It's the most important thing. Hmm? We are fighting, we are changing, we are working. Uh, for whom? Hmm? Of course, for the aim to improve the situation, the life of the whole uh, population in Venezuela. What are the next steps in the process? What is the role of the Communist Party of Venezuela and its assessment of the progress made? How does the Communist Party of Venezuela see its role in future? The future of the Bolivarian Revolution once Hugo Chavez steps down. Very difficult <laughs> uh, question. And the likely results of the upcoming election. The election, presidential election of October 7th. I will say I'm sure that some of you would like me to start with the end. Huh? What about the election? Ch Hugo Chavez will win or not? Hmm? But okay, let's begin with the beginning. Uh, we can say the Bolivarian Revolution in Venezuela that began in 1999. Hmm? We have now 13 years. It's nothing in the history in the biological life, it's an <laughs> important time. And of course, it began as a struggle against the ne neoliberal politics in Venezuela. It begins, why? Not because Chavez began a revolution. It begins because in the 80s and 90s, Venezuela was a model in Latin America of the neoliberal politics. It was the first country where uh, uh, there were practiced the total privatization of the state companies. It was, it should be made in 2000, the privatization of the oil industry. And it, uh, the result was a great unemployment. This result was more and more hunger in our country, in our rich country, in our oil producing country. The result was that uh, the power got more and more to, to the foreign companies and less and less to in the Venezuelan state. The first reaction, the f beginning of the Bolivarian Revolution was not in 99 with the election. It was in 89 with a popular rebellion. Of course, nobody knows Chavez in this time. Uh, it was, there was no organization. The trade union, especially the trade unions, uh, in order to can implement the ne neoliberal politics, in order to can uh, do the uh, privatizing, of course, they began to destroy the trade union movement, simplifying in two ways. One way is was in corruption of the some part of the leadership of the trade unions. They made it traitors. Hmm? They were corrupted. Uh, some, some, not not all, but some part of the leadership agreed with the privatization, agreed with the reduction of 
personnel, as I said, with a more and more firing the workers uh, to and on the other hand, there was a great repression against, against trade unions. They used also the armed forces and the National Guard against uh, the struggles, against strikes. Uh, they get, uh, it was criminal, criminalized, criminalized all the struggles of the working classes. And for that, uh, between the corruption, in between the co uh, uh, repression, of course, the former powerful trade unions in Venezuela lost uh, this power. Uh, uh, most of the workers uh, get out from the trade unions, and there was almost no defense against this privatization in Venezuela. Uh, the people in Venezuela made a rebellion, as I said, in 89. Of course, n uh, not organized rebellion. <laughs> and the government, uh, a social democratic government, used the armed forces to uh, control this situation. There were about, in one week, about 4,000 people died. I always ask, especially when I'm in Europe, eh, what happened with the human rights organization? Eh? They were absent, eh? because apparently there was a democratic government, and for that there were no problem with the human rights. Eh? It were very hard um, times, and of course the situation was controlled also with the help of the United States, the, of course, with the great interests in the oil industry, they must control the situation. Three days, uh, three years later, there were two military rebellion of the soldiers uh, who were used three years before to shoot against their own people. They made a rebellion; it was also controlled, and then finally. We are glad in a pacific way, in a democratic way. Uh, we won the election in 1998 with the president, Hugo Chavez. There were difficult days began because, of course, there was a victory of the election, but immediately there was a great pressure against our country against our government and against our president because the first politics he made was we never more will use the armed forces against our people once second all the riches richness of the country must go to the people for that uh, we stopped immediately the privatization. We begin with a uh, discussion and a referendum of a new constitution. It gave new rights, the working class, the women, the indigenous people, the youth, most of the people who were normally excluded. Okay, in this new constitution, they are present. It also translated in English, you can see it. And for us, it was a very important step forward because we passed from a representative democracy to a participatory democracy. It means in our country that before there was a right to go to the election every four years. They say it is enough, eh? but now we say the people, the workers, the women, the youth, the young people have the right to be present daily in all the decisions of the state. For that we have not to wait the next election to say, 
or to vote with our opinion. Huh? No, we, we have the right and the necessity to participate. That means we began to reconstruct the popular organizations. We say the most important are for us the trade unions. It's a working class. You cannot make a revolution without the leadership of the working class. But when we say the most important, we say also important and very important is the organization of the women, which is very strong in, in Venezuela, especially the women participated in the elaboration of the Constitution. Everybody feel that they were present in the discussion and also in the referendum. Uh, and uh, the construction of the student movement, who was also very uh, strongly destroyed. And this is now our work to make organizations of the people. We are creating popular councils, community councils, where the people in the suburbs and the cities discuss what to do and how to do and how they control the budget, which company will receive the work, will, be, will receive the contract. And uh, we have a lot of experience in this work. Of course, we are doing something new in our country. We are making mistakes. We must discuss it. We must be very self-critics in all our work. But we can you say the only, the only way this Bolivarian revolution survives 13 years is because the people are participating, the people are organized, the people has a voice, and the people are ready to defend this revolutionary process. They, dem they demonstrated it in 2002. There was, as, as, normal, as normal, a fascist coup against the government. I say as normal. Then, uh, no, uh, in this way, the United States acted in the last century in all our countries, where there was a little bit doubt about the completely surrender of a government to the United States. Okay, they intervene. They murdered, they made a, a, a putsch or a coup like in Chile and in other countries. And what happened in Venezuela? They do it again. And the first day there was a new government not elected by the people, but with uh, support, immediate support of a lot of Western countries. Hmm? For that we say they always controlling the co democracy in Latin America. But in this time they accepted a non-democratic government. Hmm? But it was wonderful, you know the history, I will not speak a lot. Uh, okay, the people stand up. Of course, the first moment was a shock, a frustration. The idea was to say us, to say the people of Venezuela, do not try it. You will not have success. Do not stand up. Surrender you. Do nothing against the politics of the United States because we will destroy you. This was a message. But the people, they do not stand, understand English, as we say, <laughs> and traduced it different. They traduced it. No, we have the right not to accept a fascist government. We have the right to decide in our country all things that happened. And for that, 
it only lasted 47 hours it's like a miracle <laughs> like a miracle Chavez who was who disappeared who was prepared to assassinate him came back this was a symbol of the uh, strong uh, the strength of the Venezuelan people, of the workers in Venezuela, not to accept the past, to go back. Okay, we are discussing, cr criticizing the uh, actual situation, but we must go forward, and the forward means more revolution, more rights to the people, more organization of the workers, and in this way we are going on. Uh, in Venezuela, we combined this anti-imperialist anti -imperialist struggle. It was the result of this coup, who was supported by the United States, by a lot of European governments, some Latin American governments. Okay, there came the anti-imperialist um, idea, and what came after the coup were two terrible years. We were almost in wartime. First, there was the sabotage, sabotage against the, our oil industry. No drop oil was produced in Venezuela. There we know, noted, uh, sometimes we are not conscious what happened, what means imperialism, what means uh, global control of capitalism. We didn't know that the oil industry was controlled by satellite in the office of the United States. Always we thought Okay, it's in the control of the, especially North American companies. But we said, okay, it's, it must be happened here in our country. Hmm? They could stop, of course, with computer in a, from office. In the United States, they stopped all the oil industry in Venezuela. You say, you could say it's, no, it's impossible. It's a lie. But... <coughs> It's very important to know this, hmm? that we really understand what means the control of imperialism, what means the control of capitalism. Uh, there were very hard, uh, two hard years after we had no gasoline. The first gasoline came uh, from Brazil. Lula sent it. Uh, a great tanker in solidarity with Venezuela to Venezuela. Huh? Also, of course, in this struggle, it was only possible to, uh, to win because of a great solidarity worldwide, especially in Latin America. Then the other, when we uh, achieved to control this sabotage and to produce once again oil in Venezuela, there came an uh, international blockade, economic blockade against Venezuela. Our stores had no food. And also the idea was, the message was, uh, from the bourgeoisie, from the imperialism, if you, will f uh, if you need food, if you will vote, you have to vote against Chavez. It's so easy. <laughs> you have the, the decision. And this was very wonderful when you see with all these troubles, great troubles, the people stand behind Chavez, stand behind the revolution. And fi finally, we win this great fight. Symbolically, we saw the change because all the companies was, were closed in Venezuela. 
the first company who opened was Coca-Cola. Huh? It was a match <laughs> that we won. Huh? The, this great company, imperialist company, Coca-Cola, said, okay, we will make business now. We open, <laughs> we open the doors. Huh? And uh, from this moment, symbolically from this moment, from the uh, opening of the production of Coca-Cola, which is not so necessary for, <laughs> for life, but it, it, uh, it uh, gave a great me message to us. The people and the workers can win these hard fights. It seems almost impossible. Huh? The workers against Coca-Cola. Huh? <laughs> no, the workers can win against Coca-Cola. And in Venezuela, they demonstrated it. Now, after these years, we, uh, there, were great, uh, there was created more and more consciousness in the workers, anti-imperialist consciousness, anti-capitalist consciousness. And of course, there came the, the discussion against capitalism, but what for are we fighting? Or what are we fighting for? And we came to the old idea, it seems old-fashioned in the 21st century of socialism. Of course, we, we know, we are conscious that could not be a copy from no other experience. But of course, the principles of socialism, they are here, I see them here, I don't know. I think the workers was, were writing this. They say here, minded individuals who stand for fair treatment of all, inclusion, equality, justice in our working place and community, that's a socialism. Hmm? And it's written, by a, for me, unknown worker here in Australia, here in Perth. Hmm? And when we are fighting against capitalism, okay, we have to see it. Because the capitalism is against everything here written. There's no fair treatment of all. There's no inclusion. There's no equality. There's no justice in our working place and communities. And for that, we are sure, we are convinced that we have to seek to work for our way to socialism, but it must be socialism. And of course, in Venezuela, you can go there in a brigade and you speak with very normal people no doctors, no authorities, and they speak about Marx and about Mariatigi and about Lenin, and they read it, they are interested in it. Now, uh, to make it a little bit shorter, uh, the conditions have improved the conditions. It's, it's a great question. I will begin with the contrary. There are still a lot of necessity in Venezuela. We are far away that we can say everything is okay. Everything is resolved. But if we analyze it, not as individuals, but for example in a family, you can say without lie, in each family, they see the results of the Bolivarian Revolution. Maybe individually there are problems. I give the example. I'm a father with my family. Maybe I have not a, a stable, stabilized work. The opposition the enemy will say, no, this man will vote against Chavez. He has no fake job. 
but the reality will be that this man without a fixed job voted for Chavez because because his three children are in a school, a Bolivarian school, the whole day with food, with culture, with, uh, how do you say, medicine of doctor of, with dentists, with doctors, with medicine. Okay, he has a, he has a trouble, but he has one trouble less. His mother, who didn't see, who cannot read more anymore, it was also all privatized. You must ha have a golden credit card or a platinum credit card to, to uh, can be received in the clinic and to buy spectacles. No, it's, now it's free. And for that, in this normal family, hmm, where are still necessities, where everybody knows we reached things, we had results that before were impossible. For this is my answer, what, what about the results? Of course, we have to struggle more. There are a lot of difficulties. I always say we have three enemies in Venezuela, in the revolution, in the Bolivarian revolution, the three enemies are not the imperialism and other. We know, we know them. No, they are inside. There's a corruption, bureaucracy, inefficiency. And of course, these are very <laughs> difficult enemies and we have win this struggle against corruption, against bureaucracy, against inefficiency. What are the next step? No, the next steps is a new plan in our country. It uh, was presented by our president Chavez for the years 2030, 2019 is especially more power to the people, more popular organ organization, more control of the workers in the production. It's the only way we, we see, we see to, f to win the fight against corruption. It, it must be everything, uh, there must be a transparency. What happened if, uh, if a company says, no, we have troubles with our business, and for that we have to reduce the personnel. Okay, the, the workers have the right to see the books, and the real books, because normally the, the companies have two books. Uh -huh. one, one, one book with, with uh, red numbers, and the other <laughs> secret book with blue numbers. And this is our way we see it, we have a new approved this year a new labor law. It gives a lot of new rights to the workers and also they, uh, we regain the lost rights of the past, of the 20 years of neoliberalism. Um, for example, now um, with this new law, from the, a worker from the first day he go to a company, he's a fixed worker. There's no time of proof, or I don't know, say, how do you say it? Uh, no, in the, till now, it was terrible for us because they introduced the temporary probation, probation and also the uh, contracts of three months normally. That means there was no possibility for a trade union to have membership uh, because with these short contracts, there was no right to be a member of the trade unions. This was another form to weaken the trade unions. From now on, no, he is a worker or she is a worker from the first day and of course immediately can be 
she, she or he can be a member of the trade union. This is very important for us to uh, achieve a very strong trade union movement. It's the only way also to go forward in this revolution with a strong, organized, uh, class consciousness uh, workers and organized workers in a classist trade union. Uh, of course, uh, in this plan of the next years, the main points are national independence. It seems uh, often a little bit strange in other countries, as you, if you uh, read the news about Honduras or Paraguay, you noted that we, ca we say we are independent countries, but it, it can change this night. Hmm? Say, push out elected president, and they put in a non-elected president, and take the independence, sovereignty, uh, of the people uh, of uh, Paraguay for that national independence. Socialism, second point. Okay, our way to socialism. I, I read with, uh, with uh, how, do, how you, is your name, Rob? Hmm? We, we spoke about the international situation of the working class. Okay, it's, it's n necessary that we receive the most, uh, the greatest ex experiences and opinions of other countries, of the working class in other countries, but of course, it will be our way to socialism. Uh, a powerful, developed country, industrialization, hmm? change oil to industrialization, to agriculture, and of course, all of this industrialization, all this development must be with an ecological balance. It's very important for us, and for, for that it must be a popular control of all this development. That is a, it must be a sustainable development, and we must be conscious that we must save the human race, and not only the human race, also all the living spe species. Species. species in our planet. We are, in the moment, the, we humans are so powerful that we can destroy, in short time, all the life. It's our power. It's a stupid power. <laughs> But it's in the it's our power, and for that we must stand up and uh, we must fight against this almost invisible, in 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 invincible, almost invincible capitalism, who destroys everything, only to make business, only to make business, as a cold now, for one person. Ninety nine excluded and one person or less than one person receive all these results of this business of this bad business but when some uh, some words about our party the communist party of venezuela we are a classic party we are party for of the working class we are in a strong alliance with the Socialist Party of Chavez, who is the, in the government. We are not in the government. We are concentrating us, especially as we say it, in the organize, organization of the trade unions, of the ideological education of the workers. And But we are consciousness that we must work together. And for that also we, we will uh, support in the election the candidate Hugo Chavez, October 7. Um, the, a short question about the future of the Bolivarian Revolution uh, without Chavez in the 
in this moment we are not discussing it. Huh? He was very ill, as you know. Uh, the enemy su suspect, uh, uh, hoped, the enemy hoped that he will go away. He recovered also with the solidarity of the uh, Cuban uh, medicine. He is totally incorporated in the campaign, electoral campaign. He's a very strong man with a high consciousness. Of course, the best medicine they recommended him to stay at home, <laughs> to be quiet. But there is a great responsibility with his people. And for that, you can see him every day in this very hard campaign. Where, um, and of course, we say these organizations, this popular organization of the people in the land, in the cities, of the workers, in the, in the working place, there will be future leaders for the continuation of the revolution. In, moment, in the moment, there's no name, there's no necessity to say names, but in the moment, our only candidate is Chavez, but of course, all the peoples, uh, in all the peoples are new leaders, leaderships, and uh, we are sure this revolution will continue. And uh, short works about uh, words about the election. Okay, we are a country with a participatory democracy. There must be elections. We have a, we have a lot of elections. Before they criticized us, there's a dictatorship of Chavez. There's no possibility of the people to to decide to vote. And now they are criticizing because we have too much elections. OK, in the next future, there will be three. In October, for president. In December, for governors, state governors, for mayors, and for state deputies, uh, members of parliaments, of the state parliaments. And in February or April, there will be elections for the uh, councillors of the municipalities. Hmm? For that, we have a great pos possibility to discuss political, a political discussion. It's a great possibility to promote new leaders, hmm? women or men, women and men. And uh, this will be strengthen our political process. This will be strengthen our democracy. And when we speaking so much about our revolution, of course, we are conscious that with the international solidarity would be impossible to go further. Venezuela is a weak country, uh, a small country, and it would be impossible to go alone this way. For that is a more and more integration and solidarity in Latin America and Caribbean. And of course, we are always uh, welcome the international solidarity. And we also know that we have a great responsible in our struggle in Venezuela to demonstrate that it's possible to change this world. <laughs> and uh, we try to do our best. We try also to give the most solidarity as possible to all the countries and to all the people who need it. It's strange. I don't know if it's known here in Australia that uh, Venezuela don't give only cheap with very special conditions oil to the Caribbean and Latin American countries. We know the peoples cannot pay the price, the oil price, uh, which is in the global market. 
We say all the people have the right to have oil. Okay, they, we change it. But also Venezuela sends oil to the poor people in the United States, which should be not our problem, <laughs> but it's a solidarity, uh, for example, in New Orleans. Uh, we, Venezuela sent uh, free oil to these people who have special necessity. For that, the international solidarity must go on. Uh, we are the majority. We are the 99%. <laughs> we must win. And for that, it's wonderful also to see all your struggles here in Australia, to learn more about the trade union organizations. It's very important, we're very helpful, helpful for us. And thank you very much to be here together. Thank you.